is the Harbor Freight Predator 9500 Super Quiet Inverter Generator all that? Is it really any good and is it quiet? Well, in this video, we're gonna find out. Now to keep this video short and sweet, we're gonna focus on this particular generator. We're gonna talk about the features and what's included and all the bells and whistles and basically how it works and what it sounds like. But you might wanna like and subscribe because in the future we have a couple of more videos we're gonna make regarding generators. The next video I'm gonna make regarding generators, we'll talk about two pole, four pole, inverter generators, open framed. We're gonna get into kind of the, the details and nitty gritties of the options that are available, the evolution of generators, and what you should be looking for when you're gonna buy one. And then the third generator video we're gonna do, we're gonna talk about what to look for if you're buying a generator for your RV. There's a lot of RVers out there that they want a generator and there's so many options, I think we can clarify it a little bit in a very quick, short and sweet video. Now, as you can see, there is a couple of ratings on the backside of this generator and it's advertised as a 9,500 watt generator. All generator companies do this, they advertise their maximum watts. It's basically a temporary load. Your continuous running watts is 7,600 watts and that's actually quite a bit. That's a lot for an inverter generator. Now, in case you're wondering what the word inverter means with the generator is, there is a built-in inverter. Inverters step up voltages, but what that also means is we can slow the engine down and still produce electricity. Old school generators run at 3,600 RPMs and they don't slow down whether you're running a hair dryer or you're running your air conditioner. They just run that 3,600 RPM speed. Being able to slow it down with an inverter generator does a couple of things. A, you can make them a little bit quieter, and B, they become more efficient because you're just not dumping tons of fuel into them to keep that speed at 3,600 RPMs. This particular generator idles at 2,560 RPMs, and because of the way it's designed and the enclosure and the exhaust they have on it, it's pretty dang quiet. And we'll talk about that in a little bit too. Its maximum RPMs is 3,410, so it's still a few hundred RPMs less than a standard open frame generator. Now some quick specs for you geeks out there that want to know, it's got a 459cc single cylinder overhead valve engine. It is a Predator engine, and as we all know, they seem to run forever. It also has a 6.8 gallon gas tank, which means if you're running it at 25% load, it'll run for 18.5 hours. As far as sound, it's surprisingly only 67 decibels at 25% load. Now, what does that mean to you? That means you can stand next to this thing while it's running and not really have to yell at the guy next to you to have a conversation. As you start using it and, and pretty much giving it a good load, it does get louder. And I like to tell people that when it's, when it's running about 25%, it's quieter than my diesel truck, but louder than my wife's escape. Taking a look at the control panel, it looks a little daunting, but once you talk about what all this stuff is, it's not too bad at all. Your start and stop switches here. It does have a starter, so you do not need to pull start it, but that is an option in case there's a problem with the internal battery. The ESC throttle is the electronic speed control. You can turn that on or off, and basically that is your efficiency switch. If that switch is on, then the generator will slow down and speed up as needed. That's gonna be the best performance and probably the most quiet that you're gonna get out of this generator. If it's off, it's gonna run around 3,410 RPMs, and it's just not gonna cycle up and down in volume. That may or may not be something you wanna do. There's a 120 volt to a 240 volt switch. So if you're only using 120 volts, you can keep that in that position. Or if you're using 240, obviously keep it in that position. It looks like there's gonna be a parallel operation of cable coming out. What that would mean is you could use two of these together and get the combined wattage. I don't see it on the catalog today. I did do a little Googling this morning on Harbor Freight site. I, I just didn't find it. There's circuit breakers up here and each of these circuit breakers correspond to each of these outputs. As far as outputs, you have a twist lock 30 amp 120 plug, and then you have two standard household plugs over here. And those are also 20 amps. So you can put a you know, regular 15 amp plug in or a 20 amp plug. And then this guy here is 30 amps 240 and it's also a twist lock. There is a 12 volt output and you can charge a battery with that or use 12 volt devices. It also has its own breaker as well. And then over here is two USB ports. One of them is rated at 2.1 amps and the other one is rated at one amp. There is an hour meter. You can see I've already ran this for 30.3 hours. So I do have some time on it. This switch has a couple of functions. One of them is semi-hidden, but I want to tell you about it because I like it. Uh, it is a petcock valve, although you can't see that from the display, and it also controls the choke on the carburetor. 
So in the off position, it turns the fuel off going to the carburetor. And in the bottom position here, it chokes it. And then there's just a standard run position over here. What this means is if you wanna put this into a little bit of long-term storage, you could just turn the switch to the off storage position while it's running and it will drain that carburetor for you. It's gonna use all the fuel in the carburetor and then shut itself off. So that may be a feature you're looking for. This little indicator light system here just tells you if you have a low oil alarm, an overload alarm, or an output indicator. So basically if this is green, it means it's working and you're getting electricity. Obviously if you have a red light, you've overloaded it. And there is also a low oil alarm as well. In the top right corner, you can see that this also has a carbon monoxide shutoff. It will shut itself down if it detects a high level of carbon monoxide. So if you're silly enough to start it in the garage, it may save your life. The generator is on wheels, so you can move it around with these large handles, and these handles also collapse. That way you can take up a lot less storage space when it's sitting in a corner of your garage. Speaking of wheels, the generator does have some solid rubber tires that are of significant size. They're large enough that you can wheel them around relatively rough surfaces without any issues, and they also lock. Looking from the top down, you can see on the top of the gas tank is a mechanical fuel gauge. Might not seem like a lot, but it is a nice thing to walk out, take a quick look and say, oh, I have half a tank full of gas. To start the generator, we're going to take the switch and put it into the start position, the choke position. We're going to hold the on button on until it starts. Put this back into the run position. And I am going to turn on the ESC throttle which will quiet it down and make it more efficient. Now, one thing I have learned about my microphone setup is it is very difficult to express how loud or how quiet something is. Now, I have this generator running about 10 feet from us and I'm purposely not raising my voice because I want you to compare my voice to how loud this generator is right now. You may actually hear some cicadas in the background because, well, we're in front of a woods and those woods have a lot of cicadas. This generator is very quiet for the size it is rated for. I've just turned off the electronic speed control so that you can hear this generator and compare it with my voice and get an idea of what it might sound like when it's under load. It appears Harbor Freight has thought of everything with this generator, including a tool to change the spark plug if you need to service it. They give you an assortment of plugs that you can use and also a cable to tap onto that 12 volt output. So there you have my quick and dirty review of the Predator 9500 watt inverter generator by Harbor Freight. If you like these types of videos, please like and subscribe. Take a look at some of my other videos, and at the very least, you might be entertained.